Rosemon is the next burst mode Digimon to review with the arrival of BT-13, Booster vs. Royal Knights. While some players are combining Rosemon with Bloom Lordmon, personally I feel Quartzmon is the superior option with Bloom Lordmon, while Rosemon is best utilized with herself. Again, I'm not saying this build is the best version. Remember, my playstyle may be different from yours. I'm simply giving you the baseline of where you can start and adjust as you need, whether it be for your specific playstyle or your locals. For level 2s, this deck runs Kokomon, arguably the best green egg outside of Tanemon. Kokomon is a Digimon that when in effect would suspend one of your Digimon, draw one. Because there aren't too many tamers, like in my Tyranomon deck, Tanemon doesn't have as much utility as you don't play too many tamers. And even worse, unlike Shine Greymon Burst Mode, Geo Greymon, and Rise Greymon, Lilamon is the only way for you to play Yoshino for free. It's fine. Greymon always gets all the good stuff. But for your level 3s, this is where you have significant changes in styles if you're shifting over from Bloom Lordmon. First off, you're still running for Palmons. This Digimon can find not only a Digimon with Vegetation or Plant, but a Digimon with Fairy as well. Because your level 5, 6, and 7 lineup have so many Fairy targets, this Digimon is arguably one of the MVPs moving forward. While true it does not add Yoshino, Lalamon does that for you as well. However, Lalamon is definitely another important piece in that searchers that have inheritable effects are typically mandatory 4 ofs, and this one is no exception. Your turn when this Digimon would Digivolve. If you have a green tamer, reduce the Digivolution cost by 1. Plain and simple. The last 5 rookies take the form of your Floodgates. Terriermon being the only non-vegetation fairy Digimon, and Poemon. You may be curious why this build does not run EX3 Poemon, and the reason is simple. If your Digimon is suspended as you Digivolve, you need unsuspended targets on your opponent's board. EX3 Pomumon's effect is mandatory, so if this Digimon is suspended by an effect, you have to suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. But the Pomumon of BT9 is the MVP in that it stops a lot of effects in the new meta from happening. While it does not stop Marcus from plopping out, against many purple decks that use Gizmon, Ravemon, or even Eismon, this Digimon simply says no. Against E-Brigade, no. And Royal Knights? They'll need ways to delete this Digimon before they can combo off. Keep in mind that the level 3 lineup is similar to Bloom Lordmon, and likely for the BT13 meta I would replace the Terrier Mons with EX3 Pomumons if I'm playing Bloom Lordmon instead. Mainly because you want to suspend your opponent's Digimon to attack over them, and pierce for multiple checks. Your level 4s? Simple. 3 red Vegemon for the cheap Digivolution cost, and 4 each of the most recent Sunflow Mons. One lets you suspend one of your green Digimon in play to play a Digimon with Vegetation, Plant, or Fairy in its traits with a DP of 3000 or less, meaning pretty much anything that's level 4 or lower. Also, this Digimon lets you draw a card for its Inheritable, identical to Kokomon's effect when an effect suspends your Digimon. But the new Sunflowmon lets you suspend itself to reduce the Digivolution cost to a Digimon with Fairy in its traits by a cost of 2. And again, same inheritable as Lalamon from the same set. For a Bloom Lordmon deck, I would not make any changes. Your level 5s have heavily adjusted from a typical Bloom Lordmon deck. For my particular variant, I chose consistency and defense over certain 1 ups. That is, that Argomon that can place a suspended Digimon. Cherrymon provides some defense, while Lilamon can give my Rosemon security attack plus 1 if my opponent has a suspended Digimon in play. The best part is, she is the only card in the entire Rosemon deck that can play Yoshino for free. Comparatively to Greymon, I wish Galmon and Lalamon had more ways to play as well. Lilymon from the starter deck can find additional level 6s, and Blossommon is a mandatory one of, simply because while it is limited, it is a plant vegetation target that can free Evo when digisorbing. For a Bloom Lordmon variant, you would probably go all gas instead, passing on Cherrymons and two Lilamons for Agitarmon. Level 6 wise, I personally don't think you should run Bloom Lordmon if you're playing Rosemon Burst Mode. While yes, Bloom Lordmon can digivolve into Rosemon Burst Mode, the free digivolution in conjunction with Yoshino has so much better synergy with just Rosemon herself. 
And out of all of the printings, the rare in this set is honestly the best one out there, allowing you to suspend not one, but two targets. And the two targets can be Digimon or Tamers. In testing, I found five level sixes wasn't enough, and that by adding a second promo Rosemon, this bumped it to a point of consistency that I liked. But for a Bloom Lordmon variant, I feel you'd still use Bloom Lordmon himself, Hydramon, and for the Rosemon Burst modes, switch it to Quartzmon. For level 7s, Rosemon Burst mode is in essence a watered down version of Quartzmon. Rosemon Burst mode doesn't suspend everything, only two targets, and prevents your opponent's Digimon from unsuspending by anything until the end of their next turn. Instead of 5 cards for trashing a security, in general, Rosemon only looks at suspended Digimon or Tamers on your opponent's board. Needless to say, you have many ways to keep turn and attack before downgrading back to Rosemon for a turn reprieve. Unless, of course, they have something in raise. But that being said, even if the Digimon were to attack, it still can't unsuspend in the case of Raid War Greymon, and this prevents Blitz Omnimon as well. Option card-wise, you know the drill. It's like Bloom Lordmon. One hidden potential discovered because the card is busted and four green memory boosts for finding any green Digimon that you may need. But with my current thoughts on the ongoing meta, cards like Grandel's Soul would really only be effective against Mirage Galgamon instead, because of your opponent's tamers that can attack you in the case of Shine Greymon, or they can't be touched in the case of the breeding area with King Drassel. And finally, four Yoshinos because this tamer is a memory fixer that can gain you a memory when you digivolve into a Digimon with vegetation or plant or fairy. Honestly, this card grants you 4 memory to play with on your turn, assuming it's unsuspended. There's honestly not much to talk about with this deck because functionally it is almost identical to Bloom Lordmon. However, I feel Bloom Lordmon plays more aggro in one turn, while this deck plays more mid to late game. In terms of strengths and weaknesses, the deck is very easily countered by Shine Greymon decks. BT13 Marcus, for example, can delete any of your level 4 or lower Digimon by simply DP reducing. And with BT13 Shine Greymon, losing 9000 DP on one of your Digimon would doom it if they block. Unlike Bloom Lord, who can get extra DP from suspended Digimon, Rose is limited in her own way. For Royal Knights, they will need to utilize cards like Marcus or Porcupamon to pop the floodgates that prevent them from making their plays. But is Rosemon at full power yet? Arguably, there's still more to come in BT14 with Adventure 1 support. But in general, what are your thoughts on Rosemon and her burst mode as a deck in the upcoming meta? Personally, I do see it being competitive, but I do feel it also lags behind in terms of speed to keep pace with Shine Greymon, Mirage Galgamon, and of course, the Royal Knights. Let me know your thoughts because next week I'll be hitting the next burst mode for meta analysis, Ravemon Burst Mode. This is Digipanda, logging out.